Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shocking deaths in Line of Duty. Did you hear the security gate? Alright. Alright. And anything that you do say may be given in evidence. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're going to be looking at the character deaths you weren't expecting from this wildly popular British drama. It goes without saying, but there will be major spoilers ahead for the entirety of Line of Duty. Let us know in the comments which Line of Duty list you want to see next. Number 10. Tommy Hunter The original leader of the OCG, it was revealed in the Series 1 finale that Hunter had turned on his own mob and become an informant. Zero, zero. Hunter was the mysterious witness who needed to be protected at the beginning of Series 2, but AC-12 couldn't get there in time and he was murdered by an assassin disguised as a nurse. It was definitely shocking to have him killed off, not only before we knew he was the witness, but in the premiere of the second season. He wasn't the big bad we thought he was, and it became clear that nobody was free from the wrath of the OCG, even its former leader. Number 9. Jackie Laverty The first truly violent act we see the OCG perform came in just the second ever episode. Keep them busy. I'm gonna head out the back. Jackie was Tony Gates' mistress, involved in a supposed accidental hit and run that was anything but. We didn't expect the OCG to break into her house in the middle of the night and kill her right in front of Gates. Oh, no! No! Tony! Tony! Hi, I'm a police! Oh, no! No! The entire reason this happened was just to get leverage on Gates and keep him doing their bidding since they hid her body and the murder weapon threatening to frame him. Laverty's throat gets cut and that's the last we see of her while she's alive, though she continues to haunt the show. Number 8. Matthew Dot Cotton Possibly the most ironic moment in the entire show, after three seasons, D.I. Doc Cotton was finally uncovered as the caddy, the OCG's top copper by AC-12. I mean alone. The only reason it's not higher on our list is that it was kind of set up for a long time. We knew something big was going to happen to him. Mercurio didn't disappoint. Seemingly caught, Dot sent out an urgent exit required text to his criminal cronies, escaping AC-12 in a blaze of gunfire and getting into a high-speed pursuit. Drop your weapon! Drop yours! But in the end, Dot died a hero, jumping in front of bullets that would have otherwise killed Fleming, and then revealing the existence of H. Ah! Who would have thought he'd go out like that? Number 7. Ryan Pilkington We knew he was a wrong un since the beginning, but at the end of Series 5, Ryan had joined the police force to be the new caddy, and in Series 6 was finally assigned to Joe Davidson's murder investigation team. Put the gun down, stop trying to act like a big man, you're a little boy. Things didn't end well for Ryan, however. He gets away with blackmailing Davidson for a while, but eventually gets in a standoff with Kate Fleming, with both threatening to shoot first. Kate's quicker on the draw and shoots Ryan dead. He might have deserved it, but it was still a grisly end for a character who'd been in the show since he was 13 years old. Case car's missing. Request urgent ops. Number 6. Manit Bindra One of AC-12's best officers, things were never going to end well for Manit once she got involved with the OCG. There's only one thing worse than a bank copper. That's a bank copper who pretends she isn't. 
We see her compromise AC-12's investigations a few times, but eventually it becomes clear that she's being manipulated by the syndicates because they're threatening her cousin, Vihan. She's about to be kicked from the force entirely, so takes matters into her own hands, meeting the OCG alone. It's a terrible idea, and she gets her throat cut by Ryan. <laughs> Her death came right at the beginning of the series, and despite her sometimes shady behavior, she was still a favorite of both the audience and the other characters. Number 5. John Corbett You think he's the violent leader of the OCG? Then it turns out Corbett's an undercover officer. We can go together, you just have to trust me. However, he's gone rogue and thinks if he stops playing by the rules, he'll be able to take out the entire group from within by revealing the top man. It doesn't work out well for John, however, quickly proving that, despite everything, he's got a good heart and noble goals, it's clear he won't last for much longer. I just like calm. You two, over there. Move! And when Hastings inadvertently reveals that there's a mole working among them, it doesn't take long for the OCG's true leader, Lisa McQueen, to realize the truth and order Corbett's violent death. <laughs> Number 4. Tony Gates He's the bent copper at the top of the pecking order in Series 1, but unlike so many others, Gates isn't taken out by the OCG or by AC-12. My wife and my girls get nothing unless this is in the line of duty. That's what you owe me. He doesn't really want to be under their thumb, however, and eventually goes rogue. Pursued by AC-12 on suspicion of murder, it's down to Gates alone to get to Tommy Hunter and arrest him. But rather than let his good name get tarnished, Gates takes his own life. Gates. Perhaps most shocking of all, though, is Arnott and Fleming's willingness to go along with the lie that Gates was killed in the line of duty, which they do to ensure that his family is supported. Number 3. Georgia Trotman We thought she was going to be an important part of the team when she debuted in Series 2 and proved herself an invaluable officer during that first hour. Good to go. Yeah. Unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be for DC Trotman, who was killed in the same OCG-ordered hit that killed Tommy Hunter at the close of the premiere. She was violently pushed out of a window and fell to her death then and there, in a traumatic incident that Arnott, who directly witnessed it, never fully recovered from. <laughs> and the audience definitely never recovered from the shock either. It's a shame her tenure on the show was over so quickly. A police spokesperson refused to disclose the precise circumstances surrounding Detective Constable Trotman's death. However, a murder inquiry has been opened. Number 2. Danny Waldron Don't remember me. Owing to his appearance on all the posters for Series 3, as well as casting the especially talented Daniel Mays, we thought Danny Waldron was going to be the bent copper AC-12 was intent on taking down this time. It certainly started out that way, but Danny was killed off once again in the very first episode of the show, in suspicious circumstances. It turned out that Danny was exacting some extrajudicial revenge on a ring of abusers he'd identified, owing to him being one of their victims as a young boy. His own team are the ones who end up killing him, shooting him during another raid and claiming suicide. What happened? <laughs> Number 1. Lindsay Denton The main focus of Series 2, Denton is released from prison in Series 3, but is roped back into AC-12's investigations by Steve. 
However, Denton, as usual, wants to do things her own way. You go ahead. She goes rogue and finally finds Danny Waldron's list of abusers, but makes the mistake of revealing this to Dot. He shoots her in Steve's car to stop her from getting the list out, but it's too late. AC-12 gets the information they need. We're not bringing the caddy. Denton's return to the show at all was something of a surprise, let alone her death at the hands of Dot after already proving herself one of the most capable officers in Central Police. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.